Hi guys. It is a fine day. A fine fall day. Here in the end times and what's left of the paradise of Garfield, Texas here on uh, Thursday, what are we, November 15th, 2018, somewhere around there. So Thursday, of course, is when your old depressed collapsitarian has to work up the energy to bring you my depressed collapsitarian wine, which maybe uh, I will find some energy to do later today. But uh, first, let's just do what I do every day. That's looking through the mainstream media for more reasons to be a depressed collapsitarian. So each day I'm going to bring you my top three. These were my top three choices today. So uh, yesterday, remember one of my contenders was that Hillary Clinton may be the Democratic candidate in 2020. If there is one more headline, there, there, there is one headline more terrifying than the thought of Hillary Clinton running for president in 2020. And there, that of course is this headline. Donald Trump is still the favorite to win in 2020. Again, the, the very thought of that is, is so depressing that your old depressed collapsitarian cannot even go there. And so then we have at least a, finally, a dose of reality giraffes at risk of extinction as they are given critically endangered status for the first time. No shit, Sherlock. So, but we just talked about uh, every single large animal in sub-Saharan Africa being critically endangered in 2018 yesterday. So I'm just going to default, guys, to the number four story on planet Earth, according to Yahoo News. And uh, I would like to think this is the last time in 2018, here on November 15th, that we're going to look at this story. But thank you. This is right from Yahoo News, kind of as I predicted, right on schedule. Uh, deadliest wildfire in California's history portends what is to come. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> this is a long, involved story. Not sure I'm going to have time to get through all of this no shit Sherlock story. Exhausted California firefighters are working around the clock to combat the most destructive wildfires in the state's history, a designation that likely will not hold for long. The Camp Fire, which incinerated the town of, Pan of Paradise in Northern California, has so far killed at least, I think they're up to 56 people with, uh, I have heard anything from 130 to 200 still missing. It has scorched 195 square miles and is only 35% contained so far, while the Woolsey Fire, which destroyed parts of Malibu, has killed two people and charged 97,000 acres is about half contained right now. Uh, California's wildfires have steadily become larger, more destructive, and more frequent. Experts say the devastating trend will continue as a result of many factors, including anthropogenic global warming and forest mismanagement. We'll get back 
to uh, this forest mismanagement in a minute. Uh, Jonathan Cox from the San Mateo County Fire Department and the California Department of Forestry said this wildfire epidemic did not sneak up on us in the last few years. Instead, it's been 100 years in the making as development population growth and climate change are all factors and long-term systemic social change is needed to confront it. Yes, long-term systemic social change is really going to happen. Uh, and, and, and I can't read this whole story because it would turn into another 30-minute rant uh, in itself. Cal Fire used to be a seasonal agency but is now staffing more firefighters year-round in response to climate change and an extraordinarily prolonged fire season. Uh, blah blah blah. It's uh, anyway. They they go through the you know these present fires, which I'm gonna skip over and, and look towards the future. Quote in uh, in California right now we are already seeing a shift from a fire season to a fire way of life. It has the most tragic of consequences. It's stretching everybody from our communities to our firefighters. Uh, the consequences of climate change are causing and propelling larger and more destructive wildfires and California has seen in the past. No shit, Sherlock. Firefighters have historically taken advantage of cooler temperatures and higher humidity at night, but in recent years they've been stymied by round-the-clock high temperatures. We got round-the-clock cold temperatures here in Texas. California has faced shifting rain patterns and varying degrees of prolonged drought for the last seven years <coughs> and it is currently going in the wrong direction leading to drier fields and record low moisture for trees, the brush, plants, and other vegetation. Much of California's forested land has become a veritable tinderbox that only requires an ignition source to kickstart these out of control wildfires. No shit, Sherlock. All right. Uh, quoting uh, this fellow Cox, quote, the scene we're seeing with these fires, the Santa Rosa fire last year, the Valley fire the year before, the Paradise fire this year, is we are seeing fires grow and expand at rates of speed we have never seen before. We're now looking at fires burning at miles per hour and looking at communities and cities destroyed in a matter of hours. Yeah, it was, I, what was it, six hours that it took to obliterate Paradise, California off the map. Um, <clears throat> Noel Diffenbaugh, an earth science professor at Stanford University, uh, blah 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 was a lead author for a 2014 report 
from the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, he said in the last 40 years the area burned in the western U.S. has increased tenfold and that global warming has accounted for about half of that dramatic rise by drying out the vegetation so it becomes tender, a f phenomenon called fuel aridity, quoting Diffenbaugh. This is not a matter of opinion. This is a matter of fact, scientific evidence. What is clear is that California is in a new climate. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Though humans are responsible for a majority of the ignitions in California, he said, these dry conditions are dramatically increase the wildlife risk. Quote, in our research, we found that California's low precipitation years are now twice as likely to co-occur with warm conditions, and we know that that kind of low precipitation and high temperatures increases drought risk. Uh, it draws moisture out of vegetation and soils, causes more precipitation to fall as rain than snow, and the snow that does fall melts earlier in the year. These are all trends we are seeing in the historical record, and all trends we can expect to see intensify in the future as further global warming occurs. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, quote, simply denying that very clearly observed increases in wildfire risk or that global warming is playing a role does nothing to help communities prevent and prepare for these events, he said. Um, so now we look at, at Donald Trump's claims that the, the California wildfires are completely a result of forest mismanagement and not the result of uh, climate change. And here, uh, the story explains that Donald Trump is, does have a kernel of truth in, in his claim that, uh, that forest mismanagement does play a part uh, in these fires, although it had exactly zero to do with the, you know, the fire down there in Malibu exactly zero to do with uh, that fire, but the forest mismanagement that Donald Trump <coughs> is, is talking about, that it's liberals, uh, uh, you know, it, it's environmental activists mismanaging the forest, when the real problem with forest mismanagement um, Quoting Neil Lawrence, who uh, used to direct the Natural Resources Defense Council's Forest Advocacy Initiative, uh, <clears throat> does does agree with Donald Trump, but you know, but for different reasons. Quote: The background conditions of the forest are the result of a hundred years of mismanagement of public lands, including the cutting of the largest and most fire-resistant trees, which has both left behind the more fire-vulnerable trees and created conditions 
for a big ingrowth of saplings that are really flammable. So it's taking out all of the giant trees in the ecosystem. Uh, that has opened up all of the forest to the second uh, generation trees, uh, which are the ones that, you know, it's this unnatural removal of the dominant trees in the ecosystem is the forest mismanagement uh, that is contributing uh, to all this. Uh, quote, the physical structure is much more flammable because of management mistakes and the forest is made drier and more prone to explosive burning by climate change. Uh, and don't forget we go to this next one about all of these humans moving in to the forest. Huh. Wow. A lot of these communities have built up in areas where it's very easy to have fire. Hmm. That's why there is an expectation that these fires will continue well into the future. Yes. Uh, then, of course, they quote that, uh, that planet-saving governor, Jerry Brown. Uh, yes, uh, Jerry Brown. And his, anyway, I'm not going to insult our intelligence there. Uh, okay. The vast majority of major scientific associations have published statements affirming that comprehensive scientific evidence clearly shows that global climate change caused by human activities is occurring and poses a significant and growing danger to society. Do you think so? No shit, Sherlock. I, I, anyway, guys, uh, I, anybody at this point who does not understand that California especially is completely fucked and right behind California is Oregon, and nipping at the heels of Oregon is Washington, and you might as well throw, what, Colorado and Montana uh, in, in, you know, in the batch, too. Uh, the, the entire American West is fucked. Why anybody at this point w w with half a brain w would, would be thinking of moving to the West to escape whatever, wh whatever climate calamity they're facing in their own place. You know, how many times have I said now that I have abandoned all of my plans? My plan has always been to sell my place uh, on this Texas floodplain and, and head to Northern California or Oregon. Uh, fuck that noise. So uh, now I'm off to uh, upstate New York to try to outrun the uh, killer heat waves and, uh, and floods here in Texas. Jesus, but there is no killer heat wave in Texas this week. I can see looking not looking good uh, for my little tropical plants out on my porch. And I need to get out there and check the damage in my garden, which I think is doing fine. So I'm going to get out there and enjoy my garden while I still can. But before I head out there, I'm going to change shirts and we're going to uh, head over to Collapse Chronicles. What is my Chronicle 
of the collapse today, we're on that channel, we're going to be answering the question, how will we know when the world is ending? <laughs> so if you don't already know how the world is ending, come over there and visit us at Collapse Chronicles and we can give you many examples of how we will know that we are completely fucked. Bye guys.